In this video, I will give you a broad overview of the beta animation toolset in Krita. Note that the features you're going to see are still in development, so you can expect various aspects to improve by the 3.0 release. Just like with the instant preview, you will need the special Krita 2.9 animation beta build. Link in the description below. To get started, I invite you to load the animation workspace. It opens up the timeline, animation and onion skinning dockers. Before you can start animating, you have to add a new keyframe directly in the timeline. So move your cursor down over to any frame, right click on it and choose new frame. From there on, by default, if you draw on any empty frame, Krita will automatically insert a new keyframe. Previous frames are also held up to the next keyframe, unlike in a software like Flash for instance. This makes it easier to handle holds and background animation with a low frame rate. All of your basic parameters can be found in the animation docker. The panel can be found in the bottom right corner of your interface. There, you can set your timeline's frame range, your frame rate, as well as your playback speed. You can also show or hide the onion skinning docker and toggle the automatic keyframe mode on or off. Pretty straightforward. Now, to add an empty keyframe, you need to select an empty frame and press the delete key. Otherwise, Krita will duplicate the content of your previous frame and add your new strokes to it. You can then use any of Krita's tools to draw on the frame. How awesome is that? You can also add and delete keyframes from the timeline by right-clicking on them. If you have multiple frames selected, right-clicking will allow you to remove them all at once. Speaking of which, here's how you can select and manipulate keyframes in the timeline docker. First of all, you can click and drag over frames which will both box select them and scrub the timeline at the same time. If you click and hold, you will grab the frames, allowing you to move them in time. Just click, hold and drag on a single keyframe to move it alone. You can also shift click to select a range of frames and control click to add individual frames to your selection. If you want to move a range of frames on a given layer, you just have to keep the Alt key down and drag a frame. All of the frames to its right will be moved as well. Last but not least, if you keep the Control key down and click and drag a keyframe, it will be duplicated. Right now, there are few default shortcuts for you to use with the animation tools. However, you can set some for yourself. Just go to the Settings menu, then to Configure Shortcuts, and search for words like play or frame to find some of the options quickly. I've set the animation play pose function to control space and previous and next frame to shift Q and shift E respectively, which are convenient for me. There is one last feature we need to look at to finish our tour, the cherry on the cake. Onion skinning. Krita's version of it offers some pretty good control. You can toggle it on and off on any of your animation layers, by clicking on the small light bulb icon on the left of the timeline docker. Note that it will only appear if you have created keyframes for that layer. So how does it work? Onion skinning gives you a preview of the next frames in your timeline in green and of the previous frames in red. The farther away the frames are in time, the less visible they will be. This allows you to monitor the arcs of your rough animation up until the coloring phase. If you go to the Onion Skins Docker, you can see that it looks a bit complicated right now. But don't be afraid, it isn't. The top row of rectangles allow you to toggle the Onion Skin on certain frames. 8 means 8 keyframes to the right of your currently selected frame, and minus 4 means 4 frames to the left of it. And note that I said keyframes, not frames. Then, the lower part with all the gauges allow you to fine-tune the opacity of every keyframe. And the big bar in the middle controls the global opacity of the effect. That's it. There you go. You should now have a good sense of the kind of features the upcoming animation toolset has to offer. Thanks to that update, Krita will become the first open source alternative to TV Paint, the current reference in traditional animation. At least, that's as far as I know. Maybe you want to learn more about Krita's tools. If you are on this channel, chances are you're interested in game art. Well, I'm working on a premium series to help you become a better 2D game artist with Krita. It is on Kickstarter right now, 150% funded, and on its way to the first stretch goal. 
If you want to become a better artist, please check it out. That said, I want to thank you all for watching. Be creative, have fun, until next time.